Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a Land Raider with graffiti from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me the Land Raider 8 for the tutorial. Please check the description box down below, you'll find a direct link to Goblin Gaming's web store and you can go and check them out for yourselves. And if you do purchase anything from them, please say that OPN sent you. You may be wondering why I've actually painted the tank with graffiti guys. And if I'm completely honest guys, there's no fluff behind it or na narrative. I just thought it would look really cool and something quite different from the normal. I hope this inspires you out there to actually come up with your own cool designs and cool ideas guys. I really enjoy painting the Games Workshop themes and schemes like Ultramarines, Imperial Fists and so on. But it's nice to actually paint something a little bit different. As always guys, this is going to be a long video so go grab yourselves a nice hot drink and we'll get started. After building the Land Raider it's time to start priming. I'm using Alclad's white primer here. It's important to note with the Alclad primers guys is that the lacquers and the fumes are really harmful and not very nice at all. So make sure you've got a spray booth or you're in a well ventilated area and you have a mask at the very least. As you can see I'm spraying from quite far away with a wide spray pattern here. I'm able to do this with the Alclad primer as it goes down so thin and smooth I'm able to prime in a really quick manner. I'm priming the tank at 20 psi here. I've added some Vallejo Game Air Black to the airbrush cup and I'm just pre-shading here. The footage has been sped up guys just to make this video run a little bit smoother and a little bit quicker. But you can see exactly what I'm doing here. I'm going around all the edges of the panels with the black and just making areas where I think natural shadows would form pop. If you're new to pre-shading and airbrushing guys, don't worry if your lines aren't as smooth as you'd like. You can easily cover those up with a base colour later on.
the base colour of the tank I've gone with Magic Blue by Vallejo Game Air. You'll see that placing down the base coat will cover up most of the pre-shading but it will leave just a subtle hint behind just to add a nice tonal effect to the tank. Here I've added just a few drops of Leo Game Air Black to the Magic Blue that was in my airbrush cup. So it's about, I'd say, 10 to 1 ratio of Magic Blue to Black. And I'm just slowly adding the Black Blue mix to the bottom of the tank just to add another layer of depth. Now I'm going to be adding electric blue to the tank to add a gradient from the top of the tank as you can see here. I'm working about 5 to 6 inches away and I'm just feathering in the colour so I leave behind a nice smooth gradient. After finishing painting up all of the base colours and the highlights, I then airbrush a gloss varnish all over the tank using Vallejo acrylic gloss varnish. It's important that you gloss varnish the tank ready for the decal stage to help them sit down nice and flat and conform to curvatures on the tank. Here I'm using a hobby knife to cut out the decal nice and carefully. I'll be using decal setting solutions today to help flatten down the decals and make them conform to uneven curved surfaces. I'll be using Microset and Microsol. Microset is great to actually place the decal down on the surface and set it in place. And Microsol 
slightly melts the decal around curvature surfaces to make it look completely flat and painted on. The graffiti decals that I have are a little bit different than most decals as they don't slide off the backing film. These need to be literally peeled off. Now you can do this with a brush or a hobby knife but I recommend using some uh, needle nose pliers for this job. I've wet the surface area of where I want to apply the decal with microset and I'm just coming back in with another bit of microset just to help me move the decal into place. Here I'm adding a bit of microsol to the top of the surface to help adhere it to the curvature of the very uh, extreme cracks on the side doors of the Land Raider. Here I'm using some needle nose pliers just to peel that decal off the backing film and place it down on the tank. Here I'm going to be using MIG Ammo's Black Blue Panel Line Wash just to go around all of the nooks and crannies of the tank and all the rivets and anywhere that there's detail that needs to be shaded. I'm not too worried if I'm a little bit messy here because I'll be coming back in later on with some white spirit to tidy up all the stains that are left behind.
Here I've got some white spirit on a cotton bud and I'm just going round all of the tank getting rid of any of the stains that are left behind by any of that black blue panel line wash. And as you can see it's super simple to do guys and as the surface has got a gloss varnish on it at the moment it's really easy to remove those stains. After I've finished panel line washing and tidying up all the stains, it's time to actually get rid of that horrid gloss varnish finish and give it a matte varnish finish. So I'm using Vallejo matte acrylic varnish. Here I'm adding to the very bottom of the tank some Vallejo Game Air Earth and I'm working about 5 to 6 inches away from the airbrush and I'm just ever so slightly pulling back on the trigger just to allow a tiny amount of paint out and just feathering that earth colour just to add a really cool effect to the bottom of the tank. Now I'm going to start adding some chips to the tank using Vallejo Game Air Charred Brown. As you can see I'm removing most of the paint from the sponge onto some tissue and I'm just looking to place some of those chips in strategic areas where I think chips would form. So on some of the open panels and especially around edges 
and sharp areas of the tank where chips would form. Now I'm going to add some rust streaks to the tank. I'm using AK Interactive rust streaks here. And as you can see, I'm just using the lid of the bottle and just adding some streaks to strategic areas on the tank where I think it'd look cool that the streaks are gonna form from. After letting the streaks dry for about 5 to 10 minutes, I'm coming back in with white spirit to stump out those streaks and to make some really cool effects. Now the reason that I use AK Interactive Rust Streaks is it's an enamel based product guys and as you can see Coming back in with that white spirit, I'm able to blend in those streaks really easily. That's something you can't do with Games Workshop's acrylic um, washes, for example, as once they dry, you're stuck with them.
All the metallic areas of the tank are going to be base coated using Vallejo Game Air Chainmail Silver. All of the metallic areas are given a wash of Games Workshop's Null Nile. After the Null Nile's thoroughly dried, I then come in with a wash of AK Interactive Rust Streaks that I actually dilute using some white spirit to turn it into a wash. Metallics are given a dry brush of Vallejo Game Air Silver. This is just to make those metallic areas pop.
And here we have our finished graffitied Land Raider. I've really had great fun painting this Land Raider, guys. It's something that I've wanted to do for a while. Paint something a little bit different. And I think it's turned out really nice. So I hope this inspires you to actually maybe paint your own graffiti Land Raider or do something completely different yourselves, guys. Um, I also want to say a huge thank you once again to my YouTube channel sponsors, Goblin Gaming. Please check the description box down below. You'll find a direct link to their web store. And also, guys, please show your support by hitting the like button if you've enjoyed this video. And don't forget to leave a comment. I really enjoy reading all your comments, guys. And thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.